Okay, let's do the review problems for chapter six. They start on page 195. And so first we're gonna define our terms. A, a physical change is a change that does not alter the chemical composition. B, a chemical change is one that does alter the chemical composition. C, kinetic theory of matter is that molecules in a substance have space between them are in a constant motion. The hotter they are, the faster the motion is. But for me, the new part was that uh, the molecules in a substance have space between them as well as they're in constant motion. Um, D, a formation reaction is where two or more elements form one single compound. A decomposition reaction is where, a, so that's E, a decomposition reaction is where a single compound produces constituent elements. So all the way down to the constituent elements. Uh, F, a single displacement reaction is where one element or ion is replaced by another element or ion. A double displacement reaction is where two elements or ion are, um, or, uh, two elements or ions in two different compounds switch places. Um, H, combustion reaction, is where a chemical reacts with oxygen and it produces heat and light. A complete combustion reaction is a combustion reaction where the only products are carbon dioxide, uh, gas, and water vapor. Incomplete combustion is a combustion reaction where carbon monoxide and or carbon are formed. So there's that distinction there. But remember, a general combustion reaction is where something reacts with oxygen and it produces heat and light. Number two, identify the following as chemical or physical changes. A, a chunk of sodium is sliced in half. That is definitely a physical change. It did not change the identity of what it is. B, a chunk of sodium is thrown in water making sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. That is a chemical change. It does alter the chemical composition. C, water evaporates from a glass. That is definitely a physical change. It doesn't change the uh, identity of the water, that's chemical composition. D, soap is added to oil and water is uh, to make the oil spread out in the water. That is a physical change. That is not a chemical change. E, pancakes cook on a griddle. That is a chemical change, believe it or not. When you add that energy to it, it actually does uh, change the chemical composition. And F, solid sodium, uh, excuse me, solid baking soda is added to vinegar forming lots of bubbles. That's a chemical change. You're actually producing um, a gas as a product and therefore um, that's why you're seeing the bubbles. Okay, number three, table salt, sodium chloride, melts at a temperature of 1,474 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the temperature in Celsius? And you've done this, I'm sure you've done something like this in algebra before, um, but we have 1,474 degrees Fahrenheit, and we want to know what that is in Celsius, and so we've got nine-fifths Celsius, degrees Celsius, plus 32. And so you're going to divide this by this number. So that ends up being this. I just want you to see it. And then after you've done that, you know what? Let's, let's take this because this gets kind of weird when it comes to the significant figures. And so this has an infinite number of significant figures. So when you multiply this, times five equals divided by four equals. You end up, this is what I end up with in my calculator, but I can't keep that because I have four significant figures. So I have to have this to be four significant figures. So that's gonna be a three because the five rolled it up. Now I'm gonna subtract 32 from that. And 32 only goes to the ones place. And that gives me 1811, and that would be degrees Celsius. Nine-fifths. Oh, okay, wrong.
I divide both sides by this, which is multiplying by the inverse. And so that's going to leave me, oh, no, no, you can't do that. Shame on you. Oh, OK. <laughs> it is time to quit. 1474. We're going to say minus 32 equals 9 fifths degrees Celsius. OK, so first let's do that. 1474, order of operations, right? I always struggle with that. OK, 1442. They're both to the ones place, so we're safe. Equals 9 fifths degrees Celsius. So now we're going to multiply. We're going to divide both sides by 9 fifths, which is the same thing as multiplying by, let's see if we divide it, by 5 ninths. So we're going to go that times. 5 equals divided by 9 equals, and that, I need four significant figures, gives me 801.1. So that would be my degree Celsius, 801.1. I got to watch my order of operations. You probably do too. Some of you are going, no, I got that down. <laughs> I've always struggled with that. That and um, um, inequality signs. I have trouble with those two. I just keep working at it, though. OK, number four. Summer daytime temperatures in parts of Australia can reach 40 degrees Fahrenheit. What is, excuse me, 40 degrees Celsius. What is that in Fahrenheit? OK, so now we're going the other way. So we know that Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths degrees Celsius plus 32. And so. We're going to plug in our degrees Celsius here, which we are told is 40 degrees. OK, Celsius. That's really ugly, but there's a C in there. You know what? Let's just make room. There we go. OK. Now, uh, now it's just a matter of doing the math. And so if you do the math, oh. But the significant figures. OK, so first you have to do these guys. So it's uh, 40 times 9 equals divided by 5 equals 72 plus 32. Oh, that wasn't so bad. So that's 104. You can go to the ones place, and that's degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot, huh? 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Too hot for me. OK, uh, number five. A comet develops a tail when it gets close to the sun. The tail is the result of frozen chemicals on the comet turning into gases. What word do we use to refer to this process? We're going straight from a um, solid to a gas. That is sublimation. Number six, a gas condenses on a surface. Does the substance gain energy or lose it when this happens? Well, when it goes from the gas phase to the liquid phase, it's definitely losing energy. Does the surface gain energy or lose it? The surface actually gains the energy because it's lost to the gas that's going to a liquid, but it's gained by the surface. Um, so. So the evaporation removes energy um, from a surface, and condensation adds energy to a surface. Number seven, how does sweating cool the skin? Well, because when the water evaporates off of our body, it actually removes that energy because the dancing molecules have to pick up more energy to become the gases that are bouncing off the walls, and therefore it's removing that energy from our skin. Number eight, suppose you had a thermometer in an environment where a gas condenses on a thermometer's bulb. When that happens, will the temperature of the thermometer decrease, increase, or stay the same? The temperature of the thermometer will increase because um, for the gas to condense into a liquid, it has to release that heat, and therefore the temperature around it will increase. Uh, number nine, the temperature of a liquid is 115 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature of another sample of the same liquid is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Which liquid's molecules are moving faster? Now, to do that, you need to have them in the same scale, whether that be both in Fahrenheit or both in um, 
Celsius. I'm going to go ahead and take them both to Fahrenheit. So that would be 9 fifths. And our Celsius is 70 degrees Celsius plus 32. And so that's going to give me 158 degrees Fahrenheit. And the other one is 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So this one is hotter, really. And so the molecules are definitely moving faster in this second sample. Uh, number 10. A chemist adds 12 mils of alcohol to 11 mils of liquid called acetone. Assuming no chemical reaction occurs, which of the following is the most likely final volume? And remember that we saw that some of these, uh, we saw it in the lab, that some of these will actually move, the molecules will move in between one another. Remember kinetic theory of matter and there's space in between the molecules and so they'll move in between one another. And so the answer there would be 22 mils because uh, they'd actually fill in those gaps, which is so amazing. See, so remember mass is conserved, but volume, that can get a little iffy. <laughs> uh, number 11, the graph on the right depicts the heating curve of the dark and sinister substance known as Wylium. A, at what temperature does Wylium melt? Okay, I'm gonna kinda try to do this graph up here, sorta, sorta. So we have it like this, and we have the graph at 20 degrees. It's coming up, and then it goes over, and then it goes up to 110 degrees and then it goes over, and then it goes up from there. Okay, now let's try to answer the questions. At what temperature does the Wylium melt? Well, it looks like right here it's melting, so I would say 20 degrees Celsius. These are Celsius. And then at what temperature does it boil? Well, at 110, because that's where we see the next line going across. What is the phase of Wylium at 80 degrees? Um, well, here it melted, so it'd be a liquid and there it boiled, so it would be a liquid in this in-between phase. Okay. Number 12, solid iron sinks in liquid iron. Solid silicone floats in liquid silicone. Which of these elements behaves like water when it freezes? That would be silicone. Everybody in the United States knows that ice floats on water. <laughs> and so that's one that acts more like it is silicone. Uh, number 13, I say the United States because in other countries they're not ice addicted like we are in the United States. Number 13, for the following chemical reaction, identify the reactants in the products. The reactants are on the left side of the arrow and the products are on the right side of the arrow. So hopefully you uh, circled the uh, silicon dioxide and the um, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen monofluoride as the uh, reactants and the guys on the other side, silicone tetrafluoride and the water as the products. Balance the following chemical equations. Okay, so we have solid zinc reacts. Okay, so zinc solid reacts with liquid hydrogen monochloride to make solid zinc two chloride to make. <laughs> Solid zinc 2 chloride. So when we flip flop these, this gets the 1, this gets the 2. Okay. Um, and gaseous hydrogen. Now, he mentioned the phases, therefore, you have to have the phases in your work. Make sure you do that, especially on the test. Now we are going to balance this equation. I had one, I had two, yes. Okay, right away I see that there's two hydrogens here and there's only one here. So I'm going to put a two in front of this. Now I have two hydrogens. I have two chlorines here and I have two chlorines here. That's a good thing. I have one zinc and I have one zinc. 
So make sure one zinc, one zinc, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two chlorines, two chlorines. That one is balanced. Let's do the next one. We have aluminum plus iron oxide yields aluminum oxide plus iron. OK, did I get that right? All righty. Now, we have two aluminums, so I've got to go over here like this. We have three oxygens, so I've got to come over here to make sure I have three oxygens. But now I have three irons, so I need to make sure I have three irons there. So I have two aluminums, two aluminums. I have three irons, three irons, and I have three oxygens and three oxygens. So that one's balanced. Okay, uh, the next one. The next one, calcium reacts with aluminum chloride. So we have calcium reacts with aluminum. This is, look in your chart. Aluminum is a group three metal. So it's a plus three and it says aluminum chloride and that's a minus one. So we're gonna flip flop. This one gets the one so you don't write anything. This one gets the three. Uh, to make calcium, you look at your chart, it's a plus two. Chloride is a minus one, so we're going to flip-flop the charges. So this one gets the two, this one doesn't get anything because that's the one. Calcium chloride plus aluminum. So you're actually using many of your skills here, aren't you? Now, we have, <laughs> we have one calcium, one calcium, one aluminum, one aluminum, but look at the chloride. We got three here and two here. The lowest common multiple is six. So I'm gonna come here and put a three here so I have six chlorides, and I'm gonna come here here so I have six chlorides there. Now I'm gonna go back and balance everything else. I need two aluminums, and I need three calciums. And now let's check it. Three and three. Two aluminums, two aluminums, six chlorines, and six chlorines. Okay? Uh, let's see, the next one H3PO4 plus HCl yields PCl5 solid plus water, liquid water. There we go. Okay, let's try that. So, now notice that hydrogen is split here. So let's leave it to the last thing that we deal with, okay? Okay, we have one phosphorus, one phosphorus. Hmm, we have five chlorides, so let's put a five out here so that we have five chlorides um, and five there. Now, I have five chlorides, five chlorides. Let's deal with the oxygen, because it's only one place. There's four of them here, so let's make a four out here, because we're leaving hydrogen to last. And the phosphorus is balanced. There's one here and one here. Now we have five chlorines and five chlorines. We have four oxygens and four oxygens, okay? So everything else is balanced except the hydrogen. So let's deal with the hydrogen now. There's three plus five is we have eight hydrogens on this side. And look at this, we have four times two is eight hydrogens on this side. It looks like we're balanced. So we have eight hydrogens, one phosphorus, four oxygens, five chlorines. Hey, we did it. Yes. Now, you may have to go back and forth a few times. It's okay. Just don't give up. If you need to walk away and pray and breathe a little and come back, remember, whatever is split between two molecules, do it last. Make sure you do it last. Do everything else first. Uh, let's see. E. We have C2, H3, Cl, plus O2 yields CO2 plus 
H2O plus HCl. Once again, we have a split, don't we? I'm just going to make sure I've written this up here correctly because it makes it really hard to do it right if you don't write it down correctly. <laughs> okay. <coughs> oh, we have hydrogen and oxygen split. So let's leave both of those till last. Let's do the carbon first. There's two carbons here, so we're going to put a two out here. Now we have two carbons, two carbons. We have one chlorine and one chlorine. That's good. <coughs> Let's do hydrogen next because it's not split over here. We have three hydrogens. Hey, and we have three hydrogens, don't we? <laughs> yes. That was nice to Dr. Wall. Um, so now let's do the oxygen. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we have four oxygens, and here we have one oxygen. So we have five oxygens on this side. We need to make this look like a five. And we did this in class. The way to do that is to do 5, which is the number you want, divided by 2, which is the number you have. Now, you can't have a piece of a molecule. And therefore, we have to multiply through everything in this equation by 2. So I'm going to put a 2 out here. If I multiply this by 2, I get a 5. Multiply this by 2, I get a 4. There's my 2. There's my 2. Now, let's see if it worked. We have four carbons, four carbons. We have two times three is six hydrogens. I have four, you know, two times two plus two, four hydrogens. I have two chlorines. I have two chlorines. I have 10 oxygens, and here I have eight plus two is 10 oxygens. I just love this little trick that Dr. Wiles teaches. It's so helpful. Okay. It really, really, really is. Uh, let's see. So we balance those equations. Give balanced chemical equations for the following. So we have, oh, we have a formation reaction. OK. So remember, a formation reaction is where we take the pieces and build, in this case, CaCO3, calcium carbonate. And so we go backwards here, calcium carbon and oxygen, and we ask ourselves who gets the little twos, and in this case it is HNO, so that gets a little two. Those guys aren't HNO or the first four in group seven, so they don't. Now we get to balance, and you can notice here that this is a two and this is a three. The lowest common multiples is six. You can do it the other way if you want. It's your choice, but for me that one's easy, so two times three makes that six, and a three here makes that six. Now we have two calciums, so I'm going to go back and go like this. I have two carbons. I'm going to go back and do like this. After you make your changes, make sure you go through and make sure it's all right. Two calciums to two calciums, two carbons, two carbons, six oxygens, six oxygens. Okay, so that's your formation reaction. The next one is a decomposition reaction, and that is potassium, pretty sure that's chromate. Okay, remember decomposition reaction, you're taking it down to the constituent elements. So the constituents would be these. Then you ask yourself, who gets the little twos? H, N, O, and these are not the first four in group seven. So that's your little two. Okay, now um, right away you see that you have two of these, so I'll put a two here. I have one of these, and I have four of these, so I put a two there. And then I am balanced. So that's your decomposition reaction, your balanced decomposition reaction. And then he wants a complete combustion reaction. I'm going to go ahead and move these. A complete combustion reaction of C2H2. And it's a gas. We are told it's a gas, so make sure you put the phase symbols in. Now, we are doing a complete combustion reaction, so we are going to add oxygen, and it produces carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. And how do I know that? Because I have it memorized, <laughs> and so do you. At least you're supposed to. Okay, so now I have two of these. I have two of these, and I already have two of these. I have an oxygen split here. I have uh, four plus one is five. 
So I'm going to go over here and make this a 5. And so it's balanced, but I can't leave that there. I have to multiply everything through by 2 so I can get rid of that. So I'm going to go 2. And I multiply 5 over 2 by 2, so it's 5. 4. Oh, let's see, that didn't have anything. 2. Now let's check it. I have four carbons, four carbons. I have four hydrogens, four hydrogens. I have 10 oxygens. I have eight plus two is 10 oxygens. So I am balanced. That is my complete combustion reaction of C2H2 gas. OK, number 16. Identify the following chemical reactions as formation, decomposition, single displacement, double displacement, complete combustion, or incomplete combustion. So A, you have one compound being broken into its constituent parts, so that is a decomposition reaction. B, you are taking something and, and uh, adding oxygen to it and getting carbon monoxide and water vapor, so that is an incomplete combustion reaction. Uh, C, you're actually taking H2S and Cl and you are bumping the S off of the H2S and putting the chlorine in its place, so that is a single displacement. Um, whereas, go down to E for me. E, you have aluminum chloride plus potassium phosphide, and then on the other side you have aluminum phosphide plus potassium chloride. You had two things switch. That's a double displacement as opposed to the single displacement we just saw. And then D, we have magnesium and nitrogen going together to make, so we have two elemental forms going together to make a compound that is a formation reaction. Okay, good job. If you have any questions, make sure you bring them up in class, and I look forward to seeing you. Have a blessed week.